This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and exciting times. Finally, it's an update for the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. This is the 16-inch version. They say the 13-inch version is coming later this year. A little vague. We don't know. But anyway, this one's coming in a couple of weeks. We're going to look at it now. So no doubt the form factor looks familiar to you because it's almost identical. So for those who are hoping it would do something, gee golly, was really neat to compete with consumer products like the Microsoft Surface Pro or the iPad Pro or even not consumer, really more towards professional artists, the HP ZBook X2 that I reviewed. That's a 14 inch, so it's kind of sitting in between these two sizes. Well, they're sticking with this design. And looking at it, you can tell this is pretty much a Wacom Cintiq Pro 16, only with a computer built in. So it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit thicker, sure, but it allows you to take the tablet with you anywhere. So that's the idea that they wanted for this design. The idea isn't that it's supposed to be a laptop or a laptop replacement because Wacom's not primarily in that business. The idea is that for those of you who do use a Cintiq all the time, a Cintiq Pro, and you need that level of pressure sensitivity, excellent Wacom Pro Pen 2 performance, tilt support, all that sort of thing, well, you've got it now and something that you can take with you without taking a laptop with you or plugging into a desktop somewhere. You get the idea. So they're going still for that pro market crowd with this product. This is not supposed to be something that is for your everyday consumer hobbyist, unless you have a lot of money and a lot of ambition, and hey, more power to you. It's $3,500. Now, instead of having a whole lot of configurations like they did before and you know, charge you for more RAM or more SSD, they're rolling a little different in a good way this time. Now we have a little service door on the back, two little Phillips head screws, and you can access two RAM slots and the M.2 NVMe SSD slot, upgrade it yourself. So that $3,500 model is pretty well configured, and it should be for the price, right? So it has 16 gigs of DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM, and it has a 512 gig NVMe SSD on board. It's a 4K display. Again, it's exactly really the same display you would get with a Wacom Cintiq Pro 16. So touchscreen, pen support, etched glass, works with the felt nibs that come with it and the regular hard plastic nibs. You get the idea there. So for those display metrics, it's really not changed much from the previous version other than the higher claimed brightness, which is, is true. Now with the brightness, there's something to keep in mind, that uniformity compensation, they call it. And you're going to have to go into the Wacom applet, go to the display settings, and then hit the advanced tab. Uniformity compensation was turned on by default. So that will try really hard to make sure every area of the screen is uniformly bright, and it brings down the brightness of the entire display significantly. Honestly, I turned it off, and it still looked pretty darn uniform to me, and there's no IPS light bleed along the edges and that sort of thing. So anyway, they claim 310 nits. We have a pre-release product. The brightness slider is stuck at 75%. So I measured 206 nits. So we figure that that's given the usual scale of brightness settings. Probably it's true that there's what they're saying about 300 nits. And the contrast on this is good. Our color ribbon always has a little trouble figuring out Cintiqs or anything with etched glass because the etched glass does mess with its perception of contrast. The contrast slider on this is enabled, but it just, instead of changing the contrast, it just turns everything pink. So, well, now you know why it's not coming to you for another couple of weeks to actually buy. They'll get it ironed out. The color gamut on this is high and unchanged from the last generation. They claimed 85% of Adobe RGB. We measured 84% of Adobe RGB. Yes, it would nice to be nice to see 100%, but they tell us that in the form factor that they're using this display in with the brightness uniformity compensation and all that sort of thing to try to give you a pro level calibrated experience that 85% is about all you're going to get with this. The ports on this side, well, it is dongle hell, but hey, since this isn't a general purpose laptop, I won't moan about that, especially because they have upgraded to Thunderbolt 3. On the side, you have three USB-C ports. Two of them, the top and the bottom, do Thunderbolt 3. The one in the middle is USB-C Gen 2. When you first boot it up, for some reason, you're supposed to plug the charger into that middle one. Afterwards, you can plug it into any of them if you want. And yes, it works with the Wacom Link that you can plug into a Mac or a Windows PC if you do want to turn it into a Cintiq because you have such a wonderful, powerful desktop at work or at home or whatever. You get the idea. 
Now, the internals are upgraded in terms of processor and graphics, too, thank goodness, because the old Wacom Mobile Studio was, Pro was getting, you know, a little long in the tooth. So we went from 6th gen to Intel 8th generation CPUs, not 9th gen, but this is the 28-watt in-betweener CPU that you don't see that often. It's more powerful than the quad-core 15-watt Ultrabook CPUs, but not as powerful as a 45-watt mobile workstation CPU, which honestly they probably couldn't cram into something this size. So it's got good horsepower inside. It's got four cores and we've got NVIDIA Quadro P1000 graphics, much more powerful than the old NVIDIA M500 and the M1000M that came in the previous versions. It's a noticeable difference. So nowadays, even if you're a 2D artist, I, a lot of people are doing things like using Blender to speed up their scene development time. So you render something in Blender first, you bring it into your artwork to finish painting that up. So that's a possibility here. I tested Blender on this with some sample render files. Now I'm no Blender render jockey, so I'm using sample files with this, but the performance on it is fine and the core temperatures are perfectly reasonable while doing it. Better than some gaming laptops, in fact. Now there are more powerful machines that will render a whole lot faster, which is the whole idea of being able to turn this into a Cintiq if you do have a more powerful machine when you're at the office. Another thing that's small, but oh, it makes you feel just a little bit better, is the fact that the stand is now included in the box. This is the same kind of stand that they sold separately for the last generation model, and it's a little bit of an IQ test when you first look at it to figure out what you're supposed to do with it, but it actually works pretty well. It's a metal stand. It's three positions. It has three little flap-out things here to prop it up to different heights, and it has these very teeny little mount points that stick into the back, and left-handed, right-handed, in other words, you can flip it up and down, uh, but despite the fact that it's pretty easy to clip in and take out. It's pretty sturdy. I have not had it fall off by accident, which is a good thing. What's still not included? A keyboard. Now, this is one I had from uh, the pre Wacom Mobile Studio. Pro. If you remember, that, it was the Cintiq Companion. So you can get the Wacom Bluetooth keyboard. You can use any Bluetooth keyboard that you like. You know, it's up to you. It's not going to come in the box. Of course, you do get the Pro Pen too. You get a nice little case for a little bit of stand action and a couple of nibs, like I said, both the felt nib and the hard plastic nib. So yes, obviously it's compatible with the felt nib. I know there's often some confusion there about whether it's safe to use that or not with the etched glass display. It certainly must be safe because they're including them in the box. And I always do use the felt nibs because they're a little less slippery, which is one of the nice things about Wacom products is that you've got so much grip on the screen. You don't have that, my pencil is skating everywhere kind of thing. Now, I love to draw on the iPad Pro, but that pencil does skate. Likewise, if you're using one of the laptops that has Wacom AES or Entrig technology, like what Microsoft uses for the Surface Pro, those are active capacitive technologies, by the way. But those are glossy screens with slippery hard plastic pens. Uh, the granular control a little bit less when you got that going on. Also, the palm rejection on this is superb. If I wear a glove, it's mostly just to not smear on the screen. It's head and shoulders above what Entrig and Wacom AES do, in part because those are active capacitive capacitive technologies, they just are always sensing your hand as well. So yeah, the pen technology is still on rival. The closest thing would be the Apple Pencil for the iPad Pro and now the iPad Mini 5 too, if you put a matte screen protector on the iPad to help with that slippery pencil thing. So obviously, again, this is something purpose built for art. This is not a laptop replacement. If you're really, really serious about your art, this is going to be one of the best pen experiences. It's not going to be any better or any different from a Wacom Cintiq Pro, or even in terms of the pen technology, the Wacom Cintiq Not Pro, the more affordable versions. So keep that in mind if you are interested in using your own computer instead of having one built in here. Because it is a standalone computer, it does have speakers, two two-watt speakers. They're okay. They're not amazing. They're decent. One thing that I suppose nominally is a downgrade, but I don't think anybody cares. The back camera is an 8 megapixel camera. It's no longer an Intel RealSense 3D camera. That was like all the rage when the last mobile studio came out. And, well, all the rage companies tried to market it to you, but nobody really cared about it, so it's gone now. And you have a 5 megapixel front camera. Doubtless the rear camera could actually be useful if you're taking this to paint uh, plein air and you want to take a photo of the scene to bring back with you. When it comes to heat and noise, I know that's always a, of interest here when it comes to more so the old Cintiq companions, but now with the uh, Mobile Studio Pros, they're improving it. The heat on this is not that bad. It does depend on what you're doing, but honestly, it seems to me that Photoshop, with many layers on a drawing, could toast it up about as much as Blender could doing a moderate render, not a super duper complicated kind of scene there. But heat and noise is under control here. It's not loud by any means. You will hear the fan at times. It's not something that's going to blast the room full of air. It's not a toaster oven like 
Wacom's uh, original from several years ago attempt at making an all-in-one computer with a tablet built in. It's pretty manageable. The back can get pretty toasty. You can get a sweaty hand on it, but probably most of the time you're going to be using it with a stand. You might use it in your lap. It's a little bit heavy, obviously. It is, a Centene Pro is a lot easier to use in your lap than something like this is, but it is doable. Anyway, thermals, they're under control. Core temperatures, they're fine on this. Performance, it's pretty much like what you would see with the Lenovo ThinkPad P series. They're ultra thin workstation models, the ones that have Ultrabook CPUs inside only. This one has a better CPU. And the, something like the Quadro P1000 graphics. Likewise, Dell does the same thing with their Precision series. They'll have the super thin mobile workstations and you're getting about the same performance here, which is not bad. When it comes to graphics performance for the P1000, if you're not familiar with NVIDIA's workstation graphics, it's fairly similar to an NVIDIA GTX 1050 GeForce card in the consumer and gaming laptop space. So certainly enough to accelerate the work that you're doing, and the, the Quadro drivers are optimized for professional work with Adobe products and CAD products and all that sort of thing, but I, you're not going to be playing, you know, Far Cry 5 or something like that in high settings on this. It's just not what it's for. Battery life has never really been good with the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro products. We have a 70 watt hour battery, which is decent capacity given the size and the form factor, but not wow. It's okay. Uh, but even with it set to better battery life in the Windows power settings versus better performance, honestly, I didn't even see much of a difference when it comes to battery life between those two settings. But it's about, assuming you're going to be doing something like drawing in Corel Painter or in Photoshop or something like that, it's about four hours or so. Now, the fewer layers, the lighter the program, you know, you might be able to hit five, but realistically, I'm talking four here. If you're doing heavy-duty Blender renders, less. All right, to get inside our new upgradable Mobile Studio Pro, yay, there's two tiny Phillips head screws. Unscrew those, and this pops right up, this little metal door right here. So here's our M.2 SSD. Again, they give you a 512 gig. You can upgrade it if you want. It's an NVMe drive. It's not the fastest I've ever seen, but it's good enough. And we have two RAM slots here. Uh, there's specs for a while said so some RAM was on board that was wrong. There are two RAM slots. This is a 16 gig module. So that's single channel configuration. Usually with the dual channel RAM, you'll get better performance. So, aha, I put in a, another 16 gig module like so. It's that easy. And I tested it again. And actually, the benchmarks weren't that much different. But it's up to you if you want to upgrade it. Lastly, this is the Wi-Fi card here. It's an Intel Wi-Fi card. And you could sort of, you could unscrew it and unplug those antennas. And you might be able to get it out if you wanted to upgrade that. It's a little cozy there. But you probably don't want to change that. So that's the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 16, second generation 2019, whatever you want to call it. They're not calling it Model 2 to give you an example. Anyway, purpose built for artists, and if you are an artist and a professional artist or a semi-professional artist or an artist professional wannabe kind of person, it still is the bee's knees. This obviously is not a laptop replacement. This is awkward and big to carry around as a laptop. It's obviously not iPad Pro. It's not that portable either, but if you want the full gamut of Windows programs, 2D, 3D, CAD, you name it, and you want one of the best pen experiences that is available, well, this is still it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And after you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know about our new videos.